This video will discuss creating a weighted moving average forecast. We'll create the forecast for a set of weights that's provided, and then also find the best set of weights using solver. We have a data series with 12 observations for actual demand for a product. Because we're going to do a three-period weighted moving average, we'll start the forecast in period four. A weighted moving average involves multiplying the weight assigned to each period by the actual observation for that period. A good way to do this in Excel is to use the sum product function. We use the sum product of the most recent three actual demand observations and the three weights. T minus 1 refers to the most recent period, T minus 2 refers to two, two periods ago, and T minus 3 refers to three periods ago. We want to put absolute references or dollar signs on the weights because we want to be able to copy this formula down. The effect of this formula for this example is to multiply 720 by the weight of 4 plus 678 times the weight of 2 plus 650 times the weight of 1. By referencing the weights, we have the flexibility to change them. We need to divide the sum product by the sum of these weights. This completes the formula for the weighted moving average. The sum of the weights also has absolute value. The goal of this model is to forecast demand for four periods into the future. For the moment, we'll copy this formula down to period 13, or one period into the future. If we want to keep the forecast going through period 14, we just have to have a placeholder in the actual demand column. This will be highlighted in gray because this is not an actual demand value. It's just that with an averaging method, we would have to just reference the forecast to be able to go more than one period into the future. The reason is, if we copy the forecast formula one period into the future, if we don't insert a forecast in place of an actual, we would just be referencing a zero because there's no actual. So we do this for each of the last four periods. I'm going to copy the forecast form. What we see is that with an averaging method like a weighted moving average, the future values will simply flatten out as we go farther into the future. This is expected because we're just creating an average. With the weights 1, 2, and 4, we're creating an app, weighted moving average where the most recent observation has the largest weight. The one prior to that has half as much weight as the most recent. And then the one prior to that has half again as much weight as the most recent. These weights would be appropriate if we thought that the most recent observation was the most relevant for forecasting the future. Starting in period four, we can calculate the forecast error as the actual minus the weighted moving average forecast. We'll only calculate forecast errors through period 12 because that's the period where we have both an actual and the forecast. We will calculate in this example the mean square error, or MSE, as a measure of forecast error. We could also use mean absolute deviation or mean absolute percent error. We calculate MSE, we square the error. And the exponent is the shift 6. Mean 
mean squared error has the effect of squaring very large values, so any, any forecast with one very large error will be penalized significantly if we evaluate it by using MSE. The MSE is then mean. The M stands for mean, SE for squared error, so this is just the average of the squared error. With weights 1, 2, and 4, the mean squared error is 73.22. One thing to realize is that a simple moving average, or just moving average, is the same as a weighted moving average, but just with equal weights. So if we wanted simply a moving average, we could put equal weights of 1 as an example. In this case, it's not as good a forecast. We notice that the MSE has increased from the weighted moving average with 1, 2, and 4. Another thing to realize is that with a weighted moving average, any weights that are in the same proportion will produce the same forecast. If we just double each one of these weights, we get a forecast that's identical to the original. It has the same MSE. Now we want to use solver to find the best weights. Our objective is to minimize the mean square error of the forecast. Our objective is the mean square error. We want to minimize it. The cells that we can change to do so are the three weights. The only constraint is that the weights cannot be negative, and so by checking the non-negative box, this will ensure that that happens. If we click Solve, we find that Solver has given us a better set of weights. Notice that the MSE is significantly lower. The new forecast places the heaviest weight on one period ago, and actually no weight on two periods ago, but some weight on three periods ago. And this produces a better weighted moving average forecast. 